Hey there. So uh, I think this is take like four of this video. Um, I had my uh, regular camera cutting out. So I'm having to do just my um, built in Mac cam. And I stumbled through words. If you've watched this more than one video on this uh, channel, you know, I stumble quite a bit sometimes when I talk and I appreciate you being tolerant. So we are going to talk today about more taxes. Yay! I mean, we had the um, a talk about foreign earned income, foreign earned income exclusion, which is an awesome uh, tax deduction. But believe it or not, it can get more awesome. Inconceivable! We are going to talk about excluding some of your housing, so you can go uh, abroad and splurge a little bit on housing, a little bit. So um, let's go ahead and bring up. Um, PowerPoint. First, I should say the um, I'm hanging out. I'm on the road. I'm hanging out in a Hilton tonight. Um, it's near the airport, and I can get rid of my rental car, and I don't have to drive to the airport. So um, it's, it's kind of kind of fun. So let's go ahead and bring up a PowerPoint and talk about the uh, foreign housing income or foreign housing deduction exclusion. Okay, so this is the start of the last uh, presentation I did basically the abridged version of foreign taxes. I need to reiterate, I'm not a tax advisor. I'm a random internet dude that uh, may or may not be giving you good advice. Seek professionals. I think this is a good, good info. I hope you agree. So we talked about the foreign earned income uh, exclusion uh, in my last video. Now I wanna talk about the for foreign housing exclusion or deduction. I believe if you're self-employed, you can take a deduction. If you're a W-2 like me, you can do exclusion. So let's skip to the foreign housing exclusion. So if you're living abroad, um, you can deduct some of your housing expenses from your income taxes. Now, notice that I have the first bullet point on here, rent, not mortgage. If you're paying, if you're paying a mortgage, uh, which doesn't really apply in South America because it's more of a cash-based world, but uh, this is for non-asset properties, like you're renting. Um, you can also take off some of your utilities. Unfortunately, you can't take off like TV and internet and phone, which is what I would want to take off. But you can take off parking and furniture rental, things like that. Can't take off domestic help. So if you're lazy like me and don't want to clean your own place, you're going to have to pay for it. Um, and you can't go super lavish. There's like this range that you can do. So the bottom of the range that you can start deducting is 16% or 0 0.16 of the foreign earned income exclusion. So that's if you only spend up to 16% of the foreign earned income exclusion, that's considered normal. You don't have you you don't get to deduct that. If there's anything over that, you can deduct up to the maximum for the city slash country you are in. I can hear you saying, dude, how are you supposed to know what that is? The IRS, if, uh, if nothing else, is ubiquitous in the amount of documents it puts out. And it puts out a list of cities and specific cities and countries all over the world and what is the maximum amount that you can um, deduct. And, you know, if you're hanging out in South America, it's one value. If you're hanging out in London, which is super expensive, or uh, Berlin, that's a whole different amount. So you've got to get the right amount for the city that you're in. Let me give you some examples here. So uh, I, I think, you know, I've been very vocal that I'm targeting um, Ecuador, and they have an entry, uh, the IRS has an entry for Quito, Ecuador. I assume it applies for all of Ecuador, since it's the only entry for Ecuador in their book in their list, which you can deduct up to uh, a max of 38,200 uh, 38, of living expenses. So let's run some numbers here. Now the, let's do 2022 numbers for Quito Ecuador. So the 2022 foreign earned income exclusion is 112,000. So you've got to get above 16% of that in annual spending to um, have something worth deducting. So 16% of that is 17,000, let's just say 18,000. So you're, which breaks down to be about 1493 a month. So if you're spending more than 1493 a month on your uh, living expenses, rent, 
parking, uh, not food, not internet, then you can deduct that from that, that amount above 1493 from your income tax up to a maximum of for keto, 31,000 or $33,183. It would be more in other countries. So um, let's do an example here where we've got um, a condo, $2,500 a month for a condo. We've got 120 for parking, 100 for, or 120 for electric, 100 for parking for total living expense that, that we could possibly deduct of $2,720. So we've got to figure out what is above the, the 1,227 possible, which is the, um, oh, sorry. So that's $1,227 we can deduct because that's 2,720 our actual expenses, subtracting off the minimum from the 16% of the foreign earned income to get you that $1,227 a month that you can deduct or multiply by 12, 14,724 a year. Yay. Let's see how that works with the um, income exclusion. So we're gonna carry this example on uh, to uh, one more step. So let's say you're a single person making $150,000 of taxable income. Might be more and you've got you know 401k money coming out, you might have health savings, et cetera, et cetera. But let's say at the end of the day, after your other deductions, you've got $150,000 of taxable income. So you know, you're not doing too bad. If you're living in the States, you can take the standard deduction, about 13,000. You're not gonna have any foreign stuff if you're living in the States. So really, uh, with the standard deduction nowadays, how it is, you're only gonna have that $13,000 or so standard deduction. Uh, so your adjusted gross income is gonna be a little over 137,000, 137,050. So you're gonna have a whole whopping tax bill of 32,000. Now, hopefully you're having that taken out every every paycheck and you're not surprised at the end of the year. You know, and I arrive at that. It's not exact because there's levels that you have to do, but I'm just taking the tax bracket you would hit, multiplying it, a very simple formula. It's not the most accurate way of figuring taxes and certainly not how you'd want to figure them if you're actually having to pay this. But it's a good example. It keeps my, my math simple and I'm a simple person. So 24% of 137,000 is $32,000. That's a pretty big tax bill. You don't want to pay that. Um, so you move to Ecuador. In Ecuador, um, we're going to itemize. So you don't get to take the standard deduction. That's gone. That's okay, though. You're going to take the foreign earned um, income exclusion because this is all W-2 earned income. You're going to take that off. Well, that, And you're going to take that foreign, earned, foreign housing exclusion off, another 14000 So you're going to have a total amount of deductions of 126724 that's a heck of a lot more than um, what you got with the standard deduction, bringing down your adjusted gross income to 23,700 or 276. Well, that's tiny. You're down to a 12% tax bracket now. You're only even paying less than 3,000 in taxes. That's awesome. Let's do one more example. Let's say you are a hip cool digital nomad that was smart when they got started and invested your money in some rental properties and some stocks that are giving out dividends. So you're still making that same amount of money. Hang on. <coughs> Sorry about that, I edited a sneeze. So you're still making $150,000 of taxable income, but it's split between $50,000 of 1099 W2 type income that you're doing in your digital nomad life and your um, rental and dividend stocks that you've got coming out, uh, making $100,000. That'd be a pretty awesome position to be in, quite frankly, if you had that repeatable income. But that income is not earned income, that's dividend and equity income. You can't apply that for the earned income tax credit. Earned income is only what you make in W-2 or 1099, not investments. So. In the, if you're living in the U.S., you still get the standard deduction. Maybe you have long-term holdings or something, but let's just say this is, you know, a dividend income here, and your taxes are pretty much the same. You have a tax bill of thirty-two thousand and eight hundred, just shy of thirty-three thousand. If you're living in Quito, you still can do the foreign earned income exclusion 
to get rid of that $50,000 in W-2 income you had. But that 100,000 in uh, dividends and rental market, that's not, that's not earned income. Uh, and you can't argue with me that you earned it or not. That's the IRS. You can go argue with them. They don't count it as earned income. If you think I'm wrong, please comment though, of course. Uh, so you can still take the housing allowance. You can reduce your taxes, but you're still looking at over $18,000 in a tax bill. And I put this up here to drive home the point that this is an earned income exclusion, not an income exclusion. It's got to be against your W-2 or your 1099 work. So I want to bring that as an example. Um, I'm going to put this in the description. Oops. I'm going to put this in the description of the max for each city. It's an IRS publication. And of course, I'll have all these other links in there as well. So as you can see, if you're W-2, you, you can save a lot of money living abroad. Um, you got to have a company that's willing to work with you. Um, I talked in another video about anchoring yourself in a state with um, no state income tax. These are all kind of tools in your portfolio to keep more of your money. And that's really what we're going for is legally, legally keeping more of your money. These aren't tricks. These aren't scams. This is just laid out in the IRS laws. That's all we're, we're going over. And again, any solid tax advisor should give you the same information or I'm wrong. Let's hope it's the latter. Um, I hope you find this interesting and I really appreciate you watching and I appreciate all the comments that you guys give. Again, uh, thanks for um, listening. Take care. Bye.